This video discusses the PDB file format. So that is a standard file format for biological macromolecules and many molecular modeling packages for their inputs. So the PDB stands for the Protein Data Bank. So the Protein Data Bank is both a website and a repository for many of the crystal structures which have been resolved for proteins. There's also other databases for other biological macromolecules like nucleic acids, and there's a separate database for, for crystal structures of uh, just organic crystals. Um, <clears throat> so this file format, uh, as, as in the previous video, is used for a representation of the physical structure of a particular molecule. So what we're going to do uh, is discuss uh, what is contained in that file format and how those uh, how those various parts need to be arranged. So the first important point to note in the PDB format is that it is column specific, meaning that the exact location of every entry on the line matters. So for example, if I have a this PRO here, uh, there's an exact number of columns inside this line that it has to be. For example, uh, this, is, this isn't what it is, but for example, this might be from the uh, 23rd to 25th column in the file that this is necessary. So whatever that is, uh, if you ever get a PDB file, do not go adding white spaces or, or new lines or any kind of things uh, where they don't already exist because many programs will have difficulties with that because they are interpreting those exact uh, column positions. So this will typically be in some kind of file which has whatever file name it has <coughs> and then the .pdb extension on the end of it. Uh, the same restrictions discussed in the previous file on XYZ files apply to the file names that you can use here. Okay, so the first thing we have on the line here <clears throat> is we have the first part which is called the record value. So uh, there are many types of records. So many types of records in a PDB file. Example of those include ATOM, ATOM, all caps, HET ATM for heteroatom, something that's not a traditional part of a of a of a macromolecule. For example, uh, the the atoms of the various residues in a protein are usually atoms, but usually water molecules that surround them are het atoms, heteroatoms. Okay. Uh, other information in the file, things like header, which might describe what's in the file. Source would have information about where the file came from. Uh, other information, like if there's a helix or a alpha helix or a beta sheet in various parts of the molecule, that information might be uh, contained on those lines. But for our purposes in this playlist, we're mostly interested in the atom and het atom records. Okay, the second type uh, of value we have here is in blue, the atom number. So those are just ascending as you add more and more atoms to the molecule. So notice I started with the sixth atom of the file and went up to the eighth for these three entries, six, seven, eight, just chronologically increasing. And those start at uh, the value of one. Always important in computing to know whether your lists start from one or zero. So in this case, in PDB files, they start from one. So atom numbers start from one. Okay, we have this next column here. That is the atom type. So that gives us information about what this particular atom is. So moving ahead to the next line, if I have a preview for explaining what atom type means, um, this value in yellow here is the residue. So the residue in, in this case explains which uh, type of amino acid we're in in the chain. So these six and seven are in a proline and eight is a, is a uh, glutamine. Those are the three letter amino acid abbreviations. 
You could also have values within nucleic acids for adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, which would look like GUA or THY, ADE, etc. And other, <clears throat> other types of macromolecules have different types of names. So going back to the atom type, the atom type tells us in this case which atom we're talking about within the proline. So this is the gamma carbon, the delta carbon, and this is a backbone nitrogen in the glutamine. So those all, those all map to fairly standardized uh, sets of names. Okay, the next column is the chain. So sometimes proteins have multiple chains where they are uh, distinct actual molecular fragments. In this case, they're all part of the same chain, chain A. All right, next column is the residue number. Residue, wow, that's a terrible S, let's redo that. Okay, residue number. All right, so this is indicating that proline is the first uh, amino acid in this chain, glycine is the second, etc. So that'll start at one and ascend as well. So res number as well starts from one. Okay, then we have the part that we would have in the XYZ file from the previous uh, from the previous video. So these are XYZ coordinates. Same thing as before. Um, values are typically in angstroms. All right, and then we have these last two columns, uh, which we don't have in XYZ files, but are specific, fairly specific to PDB files. The first one being occupancy, and the second one being what's called a beta factor. So occupancy matters in terms of Occupancy matters in terms of the fraction of, if this is a crystal structure, so the fraction of the crystal, or you'd say fraction of the, of the examples in which the atom appears at that location. So for example, in this case, the occupancy is 1.0 for all of them, so that's 1 or 100%. So all of these atoms are here in every uh, part of the crystal. You could imagine another situation where half, half the time the protein is in one configuration and half the time it's in another, and there you might see occupancy factors that are like 0.5, and you might see multiple entries of this same atom 6 here. So there might be multiple configurations where this atom appears in different locations, and it's uh, hard to resolve the crystal structure, so you have both of them make an appearance. Okay, and the beta factor, what is that about? The beta factor has, deals with the uncertainty in that position, these x, y, z coordinates that we have measured. So the beta factor is the average, is a value which is proportional to the average displacement, displacement of atom, of whatever atom we're interested in. So the actual value of the beta factor, 38.4 or 41.7 in this case, so beta for a given atom, atom I, is equal to 8 pi squared ui squared, where u is the actual displacement of the atom. So if you want to calculate how far this atom uh, uh, it oscillates around this particular position on average in the crystal structure, we can calculate the average displacement of that molecule by taking the square root of the beta factor over 8 pi squared. So in this case, I believe these, at, these numbers around 40 correspond to something around, I believe it's around 0.5 angstrom. So they oscillate a little bit around these positions. There are uncertainties experimentally in crystal structures, and they try to represent what the uncertainty is with those beta factors. So a better crystal structure should get you smaller beta factors. And then finally, in the last column here, 
we have the chemical element. So if we just took this last set of columns and then these three here, we would have an XYZ file, but a PDB file often for these biological macromolecules, which come from some type of crystallographic experiment, we often want more detail about what these individual atoms are and a little bit more information about how good uh, these particular coordinates are that we have obtained.